Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, we'll be discussing Bio Statistics Part 2. And we'll be talking about the major of dispatch or all variability. If you know you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please kindly do so and so that you get notification whenever I post a new video. Major of dispatch or all variability actually deals with how these data are spread out or how they deviate from the typical point. Unlike major of central tendency, where he's talking about the core value, the central value, typical value, but this is talking about how spread out, how variable are these data from the typical values. And there are a lot of major of dispersion that are commonly used in bio statistics, and they include the, the range, variance, standard deviation, as well as standard error. In some cases, coefficients of variance. Okay. All right, so in this case, we'll just be very fast and we'll look at a typical example using a set of data, very simple data. Now, in example one, assuming a study measuring the blood pressure of individuals in a group of individuals, the systolic blood pressure reading of collected samples are given below. You can see the data there, and you are now asked to calculate the range. Let's just add the mean. Let's add the mode, let's add the variance, standard deviation, standard error, as well as coefficients of what variance. So let's quickly deal with this data. Now, we already know how to calculate the range. The range is actually the highest value minus the smallest value. But before we do that, it's always advisable before you analyze any data, especially when you're talking about mean media and all the stuff that is associated with it, just Especially if the data are not very large, just arrange them from the smallest to the highest. But if they are very large, you can use the methods that I use in measure of central tendency. Or you can also, the method is also explained here, where you have to arrange them, pick a central value, then look for the frequency. All right? So, arrange them from the smallest value to the highest value. All right? After that, then we cannot start. What is range? Range is higher value minus so the smallest value. What is the highest value when we look at this? 30 is the highest. The smallest is what? The lowest value is actually what? Uh, 120. So 130 minus 120, and you have 10 as your answers. That's simple. That's the range. And there's no big deal about it. Why the mean, for example, we already know that you have to sum up all the numbers, all over the number of values. So if you sum up all these numbers, you have 1, 1, 1, 3. Then the number of value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So all over 9. And if you divide it, you have your answer 1, 2, 3.67. It's as simple as that. Why the mode? We already know that that is the most common value or the, uh, the most frequently occurring value. The mode in this case, which one is the most frequently occurring value? We have this, 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 that's the only value you can see on the table on the board so this is actually our mode now we'll now go to the next which is the variance variance is calculated using this formula uh, especially a uh, sample variance you have summation x minus what x bar square all over what n minus one now please take note that this formula is actually for sample variance or variance of a sample but if we are talking about variance of a population it's actually this all over n the n is the word the sample size or the population uh, size sorry population size why but since we are talking about sample in this case since we are talking about sample in this case we will just use the sample variance formula which is this as is written on the board here we know that this is sample variance value of what observation mean and number of observation so we have the data here first you can use this method or you can use this method but this method is especially useful for very large data sets if the data sets are large and they are not they are ungrouped you can use this in some cases you can also use this method if or you can use a modified method of this if it's for group data, but that is not what we are going to do. In bio statistics, especially, we hardly find group data. So most of the data are just 
values. So in this one, we are going to use both method, but in the mathematical aspect of it, which I may produce in our other channel, I will deal with all the various methods that is applicable, as well as dealing with the various type of mean. We have the mean that I taught you in our nature of central state is actually arithmetic mean. We have other form of mean. We have the harmonic mean and others. So let's quickly go ahead and we just put our set of data as the x. 120, 121, 122, as you can see. 122 again, 122 again, 122, 125, 128, and 130. Then from the table, from the formula, you have to get x minus the mean. So you have to look for the mean. Luckily for us, we already have the mean here. All right. So you subtract this value. Remember, it's x. This is x minus this is me so you have 120 minus 123.6.67 you have minus 3.67 you just keep on doing that 121 minus the mean which is one point which is 123.67 you have this so you repeat the same thing if i do for the third round i have 122 minus 123 0.67. If you use your calculator to get it, you know that you have this what value. So you just keep on subtract, subtracting the x, subtracting the mean from what the x, and you get your value for all this. Once you have your value, you can see from the next thing, you have to look for the square of this value. Call it deviation, actually. So you have to look for the square of the deviation. Okay. So if you look for the square of this value, you have this. Look for the square of this, you have this. Normally, if you square any negative value, you end up having positive value. So you look for all the square, you have this. Now, once you have this, you cannot sum it because you now look for the summation of this. But because there's no space, I didn't put this at uh, this formula in this place. So but it's actually the summation of this, of the deviation square. All right, so you look for the summation and you have 90. Now you just apply that to the formula which is 90. 90 is actually the summation of this all over n minus 1. n is 9. 9 minus 1, which is 90 all over what? 8. And you have this as your answer. This is actually the variance. Why? If you are asked to look for the standard deviation, standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. And you look for the square root of what? The variance. So you just look for the square root of this value and you have this. But we can also use another method to get the variance. I look for the x. In this case, if you want to use this method, you don't even need to calculate the mean from the beginning because you get the mean in all this. You can just get the mean using this table. For example, you just look for your, you look for the values, put the values here: 120, 121, 122, 123. Anybody that is repeating itself, don't stop. Just choose only one. So you now have, you now put only one, two, two here: 123, 124, 125, 128, 130. Now, how many times is 120 or coming is 1? 121 is 2. 122 is 3 times. 123 is 1. You just put your frequency, the number of times they are occurring. After that, you multiply. Use, you can see f of x, which is the f, the frequency multiplied by what? The value of what x. And you get this. 120 times 1, you have this. 121 times 1, you have this. 122 times 3, you have this. Now, once you get this, you can sum it. Now, you remember our formula of mean, which is what? Sum, remember the formula of mean that we did before, which is equals to summation fx all over what? Summation what? All over summation f. So you can now easily use this formula to get your mean here. You have what? The summation of what? fx here. You have, then you just look for your mean. You still have 1, 1, 1, 3 all over what? 9 which is what we have here you have the same answer now after getting that you now look for the deviation using the same method so you just look for the deviation and this is the deviation which is one two zero minus the mean the mean we already know that is one two three point six seven so you subtract it you also have this value subtract it you have this value now you are not subtracting this mistake that you're actually subtracting x you know that is x is not fx 
So you are subtracting this. You are subtracting. You are moving the mu from this, and you have this. You move the mu from this, and you have this. You move the mu from this, and you have this. You move the mu from this, and you have this. Move the mu from this. So you have that. Once you do that, remember. Let me just do one. Let me remove the mu from this. One two five minus one two three point six seven, and definitely you will have this as your answer. You can do it yourself. And you see the answer. So you repeat the same thing for all the values. Repeat the same thing for all the values. Repeat the same thing for all the values. So once you get that, you now look for the square of the deviation. You square this value, you get this. You square it, you get this. You square this, you get this. You look for the square of this, you get this. You repeat that for all that. Now, after getting the square, you now look for f of it. You now use the frequency to multiply the deviation. So in this case, you now use this one to multiply this, you get this. Use one to multiply this, you get this. Use three to multiply this, you get this. Use one to multiply uh, this, you get this. Use one to multiply this, you get this. So you now, you're now looking for the what? The f of these values. Use f to multiply these values. So once you look for it, you now sum that you end up still getting the 90. Once you get your 90, you go back to the formula. The formula can, this formula can also be replaced with this. Sigma f of this square all over what? n minus 1. So once you do that, you still get the same value for what? Your variance and you can also get your standard deviation using the square root of what? Variance. Now, after doing that, you, you are now asked to look for what? The standard error. The standard error is simple. Standard error is actually standard deviation all over square root of observation number. Remember, the number of observation that we have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Standard deviation, we already know the value for our standard deviation. We calculated it here 3.35. So this is our standard deviation. The square root of 9 is actually what? 3. So if you uh, divide it, you have 1.1 as your standard error. And the last value is the the last calculation is actually the coefficients of variance. Coefficients of variance. And it's gotten using the formula standard deviation times 100. Or standard deviation all over mean times what? 100. You use, use, use to multiply 100. So what is our value of standard deviation? It's 3.35. What is our mean? It's 123.67 times what? 100. If you do that, you get 2.7. Now this is the basic that you need to understand, or the foundation that you need to understand in biostatistics concerning what major of what dispersion or variability. If you know if there's any other question that you need that, that you feel is confusing or any area, you can always ask in the comment section or send a mail to our email biologyaccess at gmail.com. So it's the answers will be what provided. Now I'll give you an assignment. Now this is the assignment. Find the mean, the mean, variance, standard deviation, standard error, and the coefficients of variance of the data below. Please look at this. this is actually a particular data. You can use the method I've explained before, such as this method, to actually um, solve this problem and submit your answer to request for my email. It will be provided, and you send your answers to me via the email. Thank you very much.